and good evening one and all. This is The Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center and studios in Crystal Beach, Ontario, Canada. Now, if you'd like to send me an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. For all the programming on the Exxon Broadcast Network, visit www.xzbn.net. And for the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV, www.simultv.com. My guest this hour, Exxon Nation, is Ken Pfeiffer, and uh, Ken is the State Director for Vermont and Rhode Island, plus the Assistant State Director for MUFON New Jersey. For MUFON International, he is the Director for Portugal, Iraq, Iran, Jordan, Israel, China, Mongolia, and Brazil. He's the publisher and editor for worldufophotos.org, worldufophotosandnews.org, and... Uh, he is a former Air Force Desert Storm uh, veteran and private pilot. He's investigated over 1,100 cases and uh, seven UFO sightings and a strange close encounter at Area 51. And uh, like I said, for more information on Ken, his personal website is KenPfeifferDiscoveries.com. And Ken, welcome back to the x How are things in the world of UFOs? Oh, pretty good. We're, we're a little busy right now, getting a lot of photos, and I just wanted to say it's, it's an honor to be on the X-Zone. I appreciate you having me on. Uh, yeah, we've been pretty busy. Uh, a lot of cases uh, coming up. Uh, seems that more people are prone to uh, report these things. Uh, you know, in the old days, uh, mm -hmm. people would think you were crazy if you said you saw a UFO, but it seems to be the in thing to do these days, uh, especially today, and, and a, lot, a lot more people's coming forward and telling us what they saw. Why do you think that is, Ken? Well, I I believe maybe possibly the news media. Maybe uh, I think with this uh, New York Times article uh, mm -hmm. uh, last year about the Navy pilots uh, seeing uh, UFOs and a lot of the, especially with the New York Times, I mean, that's a, that's a lot of credibility right there. And, and I think things like that yeah. is uh, what may possibly be turning people around. Uh, admitting that they've they've seen these things. All right, but what the what the New York uh, Times as well as the Navy has never said is that it was a UFO of an extraterrestrial source. All they're saying it's a it's an unidentified aerial phenomenon. So how do people make the the leap from seeing something that they just don't understand what it is or they can't identify it to contacting MUFON, the Mutual UFO Network, and filing a UFO investigation report? Quest or report. Yeah, well, I think I think just the fact that they're doing that, people are coming forward now and and at least uh, submitting uh, reports of seeing strange things mm -hmm. in the sky. I I just think a lot more people are starting to come around and and realize that um, there possibly is something out there that uh, of course we don't know what it is, and but I feel the military knows what it is. Uh, right. I mean, there's thousands upon thousands of documented case files with the military that, uh, you know, proves, uh, proves that these things are there. But once again, these things are there. Do we know what these things are? Uh, well, they, in my eyes, they could only be alien craft, you know, from, from other planets. Uh, I'm, I, I would, I'm, I'm sure of that. Um, of course, I don't have any proof. I mm -hmm. have a few sightings myself and with the research and, mater right. and the materials and things that I've read, and, and also, uh, you know, with my worldufophotos.org uh, website with thousands of photos on there. I mean, even if 1% of the photos on, on my 12,000 uh, photo website is, is real, then, mm -hmm. you know, that's, say that's saying something. Okay, so uh, besides the, uh, the New York Times uh, reporting of the alleged Tic Tac, um, what are some of the latest UFO cases that have been coming to your attention, Ken? Well, we have. Uh, I have a, a, an article here from uh, it's a, uh, a Navy article, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact. And and uh, you know, no, there's a lot more uh, a lot more cases coming out. But I just wanted to to go over this this one here that I have. Uh, it's very interesting. Uh, Basically, what the Navy is, is doing is they're changing their uh, procedures about, the, you know, re reporting the, these crafts. And, uh, yeah, let me bring that up here real quick. I'm sure, Ken. The next one, actually, if you'd like to find out more about Ken and his photographs, here's a couple of websites. WorldUFOPhotos.org, WorldUFOPhotosAndNews.org, 
Um, let me see. Uh, and then Ken's personal website is kenpfeifferdiscoveries.com. Do you have the article up yet, Ken? Uh, yes. It's, it says here, according to the Navy statement in Politico, of course, mm-hmm. that's the magazine that, that reports up a lot of things going on in Washington, D.C. Uh, it says here the new guidelines uh, would formalize a process for reporting unusual findings like the sightings of uh, uh, unexplained aircraft. The Navy is updating and formalizing a process by which reports of any such suspected uh, sightings can be made to to authorities, says the statement. And it says a 2017 report from New York Times found that the Pentagon dedicated $22 million to an office called the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, mm-hmm. and that investigates reports of un- unidentified flying objects. So the uh, office was officially shut down in 2012. Uh, the New Yorker Times are reported, but officials continue to investigate sightings while performing their other duties. And uh, the topic studied by AATIP included invisible cloaking, wormholes, and the manipulation of extra dimensions. A Freedom of Information request later revealed uh, that a retired Pentagon official who recently ran that office told Politico that personnel aren't encouraged to report sightings. If you are in a busy airport and see something, you are supposed to say something. Uh, Without military members, it's uh, kind of the opposite. If you see something, don't say something. So um, apparently enough incidents have have occurred in in, uh, various military control ranges and designated airspaces in recent years to prompt the military officials to start asking about the claims. And uh, Navy officials and pilots have responded with uh, formal briefings. So, uh, you know, it just goes to show that that the Navy is is finally, well, I I feel that the military, especially in the Navy, have been investigating these uh, these sightings since day one. I mean, it did be crazy not to. But but why is it just the Navy that's coming out with this instead of the Air Force? Because wouldn't the Air Force have more clout when it comes to investigating something in the air than the Navy would? Uh, you would think so. Uh, I think that the Air Force does have something very similar to this. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, they, they, from what I understand, they haven't published anything to, to that fact. But, but you know, as we all know, they're they're they're, they're investigating these things, and and uh, eventually they'll they'll come out and, and admit it. I, I feel. So, do you think disclosure is at hand? Uh, yes, I, I, I hate to say it, uh, quite frankly, and I've, I've, I've spoken about this before, I, I, I hope disclosure never happens because uh, I don't think people uh, will be able to handle disclosure. disclosure. Um, you hear about all these, these facts and statistics and, and, and polls and everything um, on the news and, and UFO organizations about, you know, people who believe in UFOs and mm-hmm. Uh, quite frankly, I, I, I feel that the UFO community is a very small community. You know, I, I would say maybe 1% of the population are people like myself who actually believe that these things exist. And, um, you know, that that's such a low. I mean, when disclosure comes out and, and the president apparently comes on and says, hey, guys, uh, these things are flying around in our airspace and we can't do anything about it. Um, I think at that point in time, you know, the other 99% of the people, they, they, won't, they just wouldn't be able to handle it. But I what, what would happen, Ken, if the president came out and said, listen, you know all these UFOs that you've been talking about over the years, here, here are the real facts. And he comes yeah. out with A, B, C, D, E, F, G, proving that they're, ex, that they're not extraterrestrial, that they are in fact known military projects that have been sanctioned by the Air Force, the Navy, the Department of National Defense, and that there's no ET connection whatsoever. What happens then? Well, uh, <laughs> basically the same thing that's happening right now on, on uh, you know CNN and, and uh, all the other news agencies. They'll they'll say it's a, probably say it's a big lie, and, and uh, quite frankly, I think everyone would see through that. But what happens uh, if because, the, what happens if these, these, these alien craft, these UFOs, they've they've been around for for you know hundreds of years. But and, what happens, Ken, if it's the truth? Uh, well, it, it it would be the truth, but uh, I I just don't think people would would. Um, I don't know if they, they would really believe it or not, but but mm-hmm. but again, saying that people that would believe it, uh, I don't think that they would be able to to handle handle the truth. I, I, I think the stock markets would crash, and 
And, you know, I've All right, Ken, stand, people will be jumping out of windows. Ken, if, if stand by. We've got to take our break. And Exo Nation, if you'd like to find out more about our guest this hour, when we come back from this break, we'll uh, give you some websites that you can go and check out. This is the Exo I am Rob Connell. Ken Pfeiffer's our special guest. And Ken and I will be back on the other side as we continue here in the Exo from our broadcast center and studios in Crystal Beach, Ontario, Canada. Talk away. Right, Exo Nation, Ken Pfeiffer's our guest. Here's the uh, three websites, www.worldufophotos.org. Then www.worldufophotosandnews.org. And www.kenpfeifferdiscoveries.com. Ken, before we went to the last break, you, you know, you were painting a scenario that, you know, that, that people could not handle the truth if the ETs were real, if UFOs were from uh, another planet, and this all came in disclosure. And you even said that you think the stock market would crash and that people would be jumping out of buildings. Uh, yes, I, I think uh, religions would, would, uh, would be in turmoil. Mm-hmm. I, I just think uh, people... Especially the people that's on the, on the fence uh, and the people who think that this UFO phenomenon is, is you know, a hoax, it's stupid, uh, it can never happen. Um, I think it's people like that. They're the ones who, who would just be, there would be panic. I think the first thing that everybody would do, if you want to make some money, you have nothing in, in the gun manufacturers, because I think that's the first thing that, that people would do, I hate to say, is to go out and buy a gun. Well, listen, you know, Ken. It would ever do any good, but uh, at least you have that... Uh, security of having a gun in your house uh, because of these aliens. I, I know that sounds crazy, but you know, I, I think that, that's what would happen. Well, if these people, if they do exist, can, can travel across galaxies and universes to get here, right? wouldn't having a gun be rather fruitless? <laughs> it, 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 it would. It would be fruitless unless yeah. they want to use it on themselves, but that's another story. Do you really uh, think? Do you really think? Think I feel. I, I think the people are so uh, ignorant about about the UFO phenomenon out there. They they either don't watch the shows or they just don't want to know. I, I tell people I'm I'm from Ufon and and I I talk to many people and and I, I'll tell you what ninety nine out of a hundred people don't even know what Mufon is and what Mufon means. You know, so that's telling me right there that that you know there, there's there's. Uh, large percentage of the population that are, are just out of the loop. They don't want to know. They well, don't care. It, it, uh, but it, when the it, news comes that, that these things are real, I, I think it would be... Uh, I, I don't want to be around when it happens. But, but Ken, don't you think that that it is the norm that people really don't buy into the UFO phenomenon because there is so much hype and disinformation that is being spread by the UFO communities themselves, as well as these these television shows. Uh, yeah, well, no, that that's true. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I feel that, well, you know, Hollywood has, has made a fortune. I don't want to say a joke out of the whole subject, but, um, you know, some of it's really kind of hard to believe with what they, what they, what they produce on, yeah. on some of these movies, but uh, they really haven't helped the, the cause any, but uh, but then again, there are some movies out there that um, are very convincing. And quite frankly, I think the Tom Cruise uh, movie uh, War of the Worlds, I thought that was uh, that was even it was pretty incredible. But you know, I, I think that kind of hit the nail on the head. Well, that War of the Worlds was a remake of the. Oh uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, know, I've, I've seen the original War sure. of the Worlds, and that was that was pretty. Uh, well, I'm, 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 see, that's when I was. I was born in 1950, so I was basically raised yeah. with all of these, uh, you know, monster movies and UFO movies, and and you know, th- these are the things that kind of piqued my interest over the years. And, right. And uh, uh, it's it's just uh, 
it's just incredible what what uh, what Hollywood has done with the special effects and everything else. But uh, like the movie Signs with Mel Gibson, I thought mm-hmm. that kind of hit the nail on the head right there with that movie. I, I understand for those who want to believe there is no shaking their tree. I I know that, and I can appreciate that. But what about the majority of the population who really doesn't buy into it? Well, they just they don't want something else to worry about, I guess. I mean, when you really sit down mm-hmm. and think about it, <clears throat> you know, just thinking that there's possibly alien crafts flying all over the sky, they're 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 buzzing aircraft, they're they're buzzing military planes are flying over ships. I mean, just the thought of of aliens are in this in our skies w- would be enough to make anyone um, panicky. I, I yeah. guess it would it would give should give a lot of people a lot of fears to to being alive on on the earth. Uh, and I think people just this is just their way of blocking it out of their head. They don't want to know. They don't want to see, and they don't care. So that's I think that's their way of dealing with it. But what if they're right? And you're wrong. Well, uh, <laughs> there is that possibility. It's a fifty-fifty chance. Oh no, of course there is. I, you yeah. know, I, I had my gun ready, so uh, you know, it, <laughs> uh, yeah, of course. Hey, I, from what I've seen mm-hmm. and heard over the years, uh, anything is possible. But what have you seen that has convinced you, Ken? Well, like I said, I've I've got. Um, uh, seven sightings myself um you know i had my first sighting in 1974 it was a, a metallic uh it was a large um uh, glowing uh, turquoise disc that flew over our car at about maybe two or three hundred feet and wow and as a matter of fact the next day the uh the Dufford, uh, woodbury times uh, they had an article about some some policemen and some witnesses saw some saw a UFO flying around the sky that night. So, you know, it's just things like sure. that and then so many other sightings I've had that it at least proves to me that there's, of course, I, uh, I'd i be foolish to say I'm, I'm 100% convinced. Or, right. Uh, uh, but it's um, that's, that's more than enough evidence for me to realize that there's something strange going on in his eyes. Um. Now, you sent us four photographs that uh, you want to talk about, and we're going to be putting them on the screen later on today. So tell us about those four photographs. Well, this is a this, this came up last year. This was not October of, of 2018. Uh, uh-huh. Apparently someone uh, uh, posted this uh, video. And as a matter of fact, this video, this, this case was... Um, given to MUFON. Uh, this, this person here, what they did is they submitted the case to MUFON with, with photos that they had extracted from the video and the, and the full video. And, uh, and quite frankly, what MUFON has done is they classify this case as a hoax. Mm-hmm. Now, that's very interesting to me because the the person that that uh, investigated the case uh, emailed the witness, waited ten days, uh, didn't get any response from the witness, and then just classified it as a hoax, saying that you know the possibility that the uh, the sunlight bouncing off the crowd uh, off the craft didn't co- correlate with the with the shadows on the ground uh, it was a lot of BS was on this report and you know without even getting this this, this video analyzed it's more matter of fact mark d'antonio he's the photo analyst on with mufon no right. mention of his name um you know if she were to properly investigate this case he would have been involved there would have been you know evidence that that this was a fake and quite frankly um you know i i, I feel that, that she buried this, um, and that happens a lot with MUFON, I hate to say. Why do you think this is happening? So am I detecting some dissension within the ranks at MUFON? Well, I've, I really don't know. I, I, I hope... I, I Well, I think that a lot of these investigators, mm-hmm. and including myself, you know, I don't know at all. Um, I've, I've got 1,100 investigations, and, and quite frankly... Uh, 
most times, uh, you know, you're you're assuming that that the witness actually did see a UFO. They did see these lights in the sky, and and it would be very easy for me to call them liars and say that this is a hoax and this could not happen. Uh, and I, it, but that's what's happening sometimes with a lot of cases that that, that come across uh, the boards there at MUFON that uh, a lot of these investigators are guessing. Um, what the witness saw, you know, even though there's there's evidence that, uh, right. you know, as a matter of fact, one case that I can remember, I investigate these cases. Any time a case comes up, uh, uh, when I have the time, if it says uh, uh, hoax uh, or it says IFO, identify flying objects, they're the cases I look at. And I'd look to see if the investigators have done their job. And quite frankly, um, many, many times they, they have not. And, really? and I could see that the the, wit, the, wit, the investigator is guessing that, oh, well, the witness probably saw the ISS flying over, or the witness probably saw a, a, a high-flying uh, a military aircraft in the sky, or I guess the witness may have seen, you know, it's, it's, it's guessing, guessing, guessing. And, you know, I, I, I approach these cases from witnesses believing them. Of course, there's going to be hoaxes every once in a while. But, but, but let me let me ask let me ask you something little, here. Let me a very let, very low percentage of of Larry, can, hoaxes. Can uh, yeah. let me ask you something? We've got to take a commercial break here uh, for the news. As, as a former police investigator, when we would go into an investigation, we would go in with an open mind. We wouldn't go into an investigation with a supposition of of you know. Uh, this person or that person did it. We would have to get the evidence to prove that this person did it. And right. by going in with a supposition that John John Doe is the su- is the suspect, unless there's extenuating circumstantial evidence to to lead the investigation that way, wouldn't yeah. that be tainting the investigation? Going in with a supposition. Think about that. We've got to take our break. And Exo Nation, Ken Pfeiffer is our special guest. WorldUFOPhotos.org. WorldUFOPhotos and news.org, and, excuse me, Ken Pfeiffer Discoveries.com. This is the Exxon. I am Ralph McConnell. Ken Pfeiffer and I return on the other side of this break after the news. Don't go away. Ken Pfeiffer is our special guest. Now, Ken is the state director for the state of Vermont and Rhode Island, plus the assistant state director for MUFON, New Jersey. Uh, Ken is also the MUFON international director for Portugal, Iraq, Iran, Jordan, Israel, China, Mongolia, and Brazil. Now, Ken, before we went to the uh, news, we were talking about you know how you go in believing the witness uh, who files the UFO report. And, and it seems that you disagree with some of the findings of, of other investigators. And, and I brought up a point that, that I, I caught on that I found rather strange when you said you go in believing the witness or the sighting itself. Uh, doesn't, that, doesn't that mean that you're going in with a tainted view of the investigation? And as an investigator, shouldn't you be neutral? Well, yes. I, what, what, what I really meant to say, okay. I, well, what I said, I, I'll stand by. But, but on top of that, mm-hmm. you know, we have more to gain by going into a into an investigation and believing a witness than than automatically going into an investigation and not believing a witness because we feel that these things don't exist. But wait a minute. So wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold uh, on. Like here, I hold said, on we here. have more to gain hold by, by can just hold believing on believing the witness statement. Can can hold on here. Hold on here. Yeah. Are, are you saying that MUFON goes into an investigation believing that UFOs don't exist? I think some of them do. All right, but that's not MUFON standard, or else uh, it, no, it no, wouldn't no, make no, sense no, that MUFON exists. No, it's not MUFON exist. standard okay. for sure. I mean, MUFON is a, a, a great organization. Mm-hmm. I mean, they have 
case files galore. Um, you know, they're they're the they're they've been doing this for years. Sure. But then again, you know, we we do get some debunkers in there, and mm-hmm. we do get some some people in there who, um, you know, if you give them twenty cases to investigate, uh, nineteen of them are uh, identified flying objects. Okay, and what what is the what is the procedure that is followed with MUFON when somebody files a report? For example, somebody listening tonight goes to go and have a coffee. They look up in the sky. They see something that they believe is an unknown flying object. They go to the MUFON website and they file a report online. What happens when that report is filed? What is the procedures followed? Well, what it boils down to is, is uh, of course, whatever state it came from, let's mm-hmm. say it came from New Jersey. Right. And that case file would be sent to me. Mm-hmm. And I would either take on the case myself or I would assign it to the, to the many investigators we have in New Jersey and, and let them investigate it. Or if the case come from, from Canada, mm-hmm. you know, we, we would send it to the, uh, uh, MUFON would send it to the director of Canada there, and, and he would either investigate it or divvy it out to whatever investigators he has in Canada. So that, that's the first step. And next, when we, when we get the, the uh, uh, report, uh, what we do is uh, we're hoping for a phone number, first of all. Uh, you know, we, we nine times out of ten, we do get email addresses, we do get phone numbers, and the first thing we do is try to contact the witness by phone. And uh, when we do get a witness on the phone, we basically uh, we go over all of the questions that were on the, the uh, uh, Forum that he filled out. Make sure he filled in all the uh, all the questions and you know cross the T's, dotted the I's, and made sure we get all the information. And then of course we we ask him what he saw and if there was any any additional information that he, maybe he forgot about and remembered. Uh, you know we we jot that down and add that to the uh, witness statement. And at that point in time, um, you know, we tell the witness, I tell the witness, you know, hey, if, if I find out exactly what this was, I'll be sure to give you a call back and let you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and what we do at that, that point is, you see, it depends on what the witness saw. Now, if a witness saw uh, a light uh, at nighttime just mm-hmm. flying across the sky, you know, chances are it's probably a satellite, but I'm not going to guess at that. I'm going to go to the satellite websites. Uh, N2YO is a good one. There's, there's many websites we go to <clears throat> that tracks these satellites that, that can give us uh, uh, almost a, a, an, a, an exact time as to where this, where this satellite flew over and, uh, and when. And, but then again, if, if someone reports in the sky that this light up there in, in the uh, atmosphere uh, was, was moving in a zigzag direction or was doing loops and crisscrosses and everything else, then, you know, we know that's not a satellite. Sure. So that, that alleviates even going to a satellite website to prove this. And, you know, how can we really say what this was? Now, in a case like that, after looking, after talking to the witness, you know, feeling if he's credible, you know, his, what he does, is he retired, uh, was he in the military, uh, was he a policeman? Uh, you kind of get a feel as to witness credibility, and, and you look at his statements, and you look at the, uh, you know, uh, the times, exact times, and, and you know, if, if a witness is very detailed, uh, uh, or, you know, uh, to what he put on the form, that then, you know, in mm-hmm. a case like that, I could only say that this is an unknown. But we're not allowed to say alien craft or identify flying object or, right. or um, well, IFO is identify flying object. That could be an airplane. That could be anything. But sure. uh, we don't have any de- designation for, you know, the real thing. So the only thing that we could do is, is put down unknown. And, and all of these cases that are questionable, they, they all get classified as unknown. Okay, but earlier, I, I you know, when we were talking, you were saying that, there are some investigators who, and you use the number out of uh, out of twenty files, they would they would classify nineteen nineteen of these sightings as IFOs. Is is this common? 
Uh, I wouldn't want to say common, but uh, there are a, you know, that to me that sends up red flags. If I mm-hmm. was an investigator, if I was a MUFON investigator who investigated cases that our investigators investigated, <laughs> okay. then I would be looking at these cases. I would mm-hmm. be looking, as a matter of fact, years ago, uh, we had a an investigator from, from New Jersey, and, and this, this person came on board, and... and uh, you know, she she seemed to be uh, you know very very knowledgeable and and very eager to to uh, want to investigate uh, sightings and and um, that was the case with her. You know, twenty cases investigated, and nineteen of them are identified flying objects. So I started looking into her cases and realized that you know I don't even think this person is really investigating anything. She's basically reading the, the witness statement and she sees this and. That the uh, the witness saw a plane, the witness saw a meteor, um, you know, saw a satellite right. in the sky, um, you know, and at that point, as a matter of fact, what I did is is I took over her her cases and started to uh, investigate them myself, uh, called the witness, and come to find out that that uh, many witnesses that she claimed she uh, she called, uh, no one was ever contacted, so you know. I felt that she was not uh, doing her job, or the job she was doing was very poor. So eventually, she was uh, she was basically released from UFON. Now, was she one of your uh, investigators? Uh, one of the investigators under your jurisdiction as a state director? Well, um, back then I was uh, well, I was only just a, a state section director. But uh, George Fowler, from from almost day one. Um, Asked me to, um, you know, assign the cases, and, mm-hmm. and and that's what I've been doing since, uh, you know, 2006, 2007. Is is uh, uh, taking care of, of all that kind of uh, business of, of assigning investigators and 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 things like that. And and uh, so, so this lady was one of your investigators that you reinvestigated her cases because, as I understand it, as as the senior investigator responsible for other investigators, you found the investigation to be inadequate. Uh, yes. Hmm. Who trained her? Well, nobody really trained you. I, I, they're supposed to be getting all this training uh, from UFON. Of mm-hmm. course, a lot of things have changed in UFON. I see. Uh, essentially, what back then, this was, I don't know, 2008, 2009, uh, we you find didn't have a whole lot of training uh, uh, training criteria as they do today. Yeah. Uh, you find it has the MUFON University, and and you know you, you go here to learn this and that, and it's very detailed and, and very very. It's really an, an incredible system that MUFON has has set up. But it's you know it, it's it should have done this twenty years ago. Well, another thing we have to take into consideration is that all of the investigators and everyone at MUFON is a volunteer. Oh, they are. Yeah, they pay for everything out of their pockets, so... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's trying to find a good investigator who who really is to my level, mm-hmm. that really believes in these things and know that they exist and want to know the truth, uh, but they're hard to find. Everybody wants to be an investigator, but when the time comes down to investigate, um, I would say more than half of them won't even make that phone, first phone call to a witness to uh, ask them questions. I guess they're scared. Mm-hmm. I guess they feel this is what, wasn't what they signed up for. But uh, I would say 99% of our invest, investigations are done over the phone. In my day of police work, investigations were done by door knocking. Of course. Yeah. Hey, Ken, stand by. Going offering. back to we're volunteers, and, yeah. and, you know, we're not getting paid to travel 40 miles so someone can point up in the sky yeah. and say, yeah, that's where it was. All right, uh, Ken, stand by, it. buddy. We've got to take our final break here. Exonation. Ken Pfeiffer's our guest this hour. And uh, here's a couple of sites for Ken. WorldUFOPhotos.org, WorldUFOPhotosAndNews.org, and KenPfeifferDiscoveries.com. We'll be back as we wrap up this hour here in the Exxon with yours truly, Rob McConnell, from our broadcast center and studios in Crystal Beach, Ontario, on the other side of this break. I'll be back.
Exo Nation, uh, Ken Pfeiffer is our guest this hour. And as I've been saying, he is the state director for MUFON for the state of Vermont and Rhode Island, plus assistant director uh, for MUFON New Jersey. He's also the international director of MUFON for Portugal, Iraq, Iran, Jordan, Israel, China, Mongolia, and Brazil. Ken, how did you become a, a, an international director and how are the investigations that are that are given to you as the the international director for these other countries. How are they investigated, and how do you monitor the investigations so far away? Well, essentially, I've I've you know with the work I do, I'm usually busy. I, I do a lot of UFO stuff, and mm-hmm. and um, you know I I I get bored sometimes, so I started looking into the uh, international cases. And uh, this was years ago now, and I come to find out that you know. Very, very little of these international cases were being investigated at all. So I started to inquire and I started to um, ask around, and I, I, you know, they they finally started to uh, assign cases to to different people, and uh, they, you know, they assigned some cases to me, and I, you know, I did some uh, many. I closed many cases out. Uh, the only problem with these old cases are. Uh, the email addresses, well, forget about phone calls because I'm not going to call Turkey. Um, but, you know, we, we, we do these, these uh, investigations through the email. Mm-hmm. And I usually give the witness three or four tries. I, I email the witness three or four times. If, if they haven't gotten back to me, then I can assume that, uh, you know, either they don't want to talk to me or the email address is, is bad or something. So I just, I just write the uh, case off as um, uh, information only. Uh, because there's really nothing we could do with it. But the 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 people that we do talk mm-hmm. to, uh, we go through the same process uh, by email. It's it's a lot harder, and it's a little, it's a lengthy process sometimes of uh, you know asking additional questions and and making sure they fill out their their address locations and phone numbers and emails and and uh, you know um, their their history, their education, when were they born, uh, what do they do now, their health questions, mm-hmm. things like that that. Uh, most of these people don't answer, so we have to get back to them and, and you know, ask them in the email to fill out this information so we can at least report, we can fill out the form that, that they started to fill out. And it's, it's the same process of, if, uh, you know, we, we have uh, different websites that we go to. Uh, we also go to different UFO organizations, uh, like a UFO Reporting Center, uh, Peter Davenport, he's got a very good uh, database. Uh, we go to different websites to see if any sightings were reported in that country, um, you know, around that date. So we try to correlate some of these cases. And, and uh, nine times out of ten, we, we basically um, come up with, uh, you know, these cases are, are classified as unknown uh, because we, we don't know. Like I said, I don't want to guess. Sure. Of what this witness saw, but the, the only bad part about that was, you know, a lot of these cases went on for so long. He finally gave me Iran uh, and Iraq, and most of the cases were from our soldiers who were on the front lines in Iraq, and some of these sightings are just incredible things that they saw. Of course, all these soldiers know what drones look like and they know what missiles look like, but you know, I mean, these are actual flying saucers that uh, a lot of these soldiers claim to have seen. and um, But the only problem, again, is a lot of times these, these phone numbers and, 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 and emails, uh, they don't exist anymore. So it's, mm. it's, very rare, it's very rare that we can ever really contact these, these soldiers that, that were on the front line uh, reporting all these things. So, but we're, we're getting called out with the international... Uh, We've closed out, uh, I personally have closed out a couple hundred of them myself. Uh, most of them were because I couldn't contact the witness, so we had to close them out. But I, you know, I, I do my due diligence and, and try to contact the witness by email three times. But um, we're starting to get called up finally. It might take us another year, I think, to get finally called up. And there's volunteers like myself that are actively uh, helping you find, um, you know, find out the truth about these cases. So it, it's, um, it, it, it's fun to do. I, it, I, I live for this stuff. Do the uh, descriptions of these unknown craft match the description of the crafts that are cited in the U.S. and over Canada? Or if, do different countries have different 
uh, crafts that are being reported to you? No, they're basically all the same triangles. Um, you know, um, well, we have some cases uh, going back 30, 40 years that, that are, are triangle mm-hmm. cases. And, and, you know, if this, I doubt if we had experimental triangle craft back, back then 40 years ago. But, you know, this has proved to me that, that these things have been around for quite a long time. But, uh, no, no, everything is basically the same. There's nothing, uh, nothing different about uh, what they're seeing over in Europe and than what we're seeing here in the States. What was your take on the storming of Area 51? Oh, that was a joke. I was I was mad at J- Jesse Ventura. He did a series, uh, I don't know if you remember, oh, a few sure years do, yeah. ago, maybe 10 years ago, yeah. maybe longer than that, where he, he did some pretty good investigative things on, on um, uh, Plum Island and, and a lot of different... It was a good series, and, and he went to Area 51 and... and he was afraid to step over the line there in Area 51. And I, I emailed him, and I emailed a lot of people and told them, you guys bring down a camera crew, you bring down reporters, you guarantee to bail me out of jail, I'll step over the line at Area 51 just to see what's going to happen. But and why, nobody took me up on it. But why would you want to break the law? I Well, it's... it's well, stepping over a line is... is it's tres- not breaking it, law. It's it's, just, it's trespassing. It's, about, it's, you know? it's trespassing. Sometimes you got to do something, do it, things to 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 get results, and and uh, I just think it would be one hell of an experience to uh, to do it. But trespassing is trespassing. Trespassing is breaking the law. So you would break the law for what? You're not going to see anything. You're not no, going to I, learn I anything. That, so uh, why would I you want to do that? Doesn't that doesn't that put the the jeopardy and the credibility of other investigators under the public microscope. But then again, I think it's given the, the, the these investigators a, a, a little kick in the ass, uh, telling them that uh, you know it can be done. You know, it's it's you gotta you gotta stand out on that ledge a little bit to to find out the truth. You gotta be you gotta be a little bit daring. You gotta be a little bit crazy. You, you gotta be you gotta be different than than. Ninety-nine percent of all the people to to try to get to the truth. But that's not how a real investigator gets to the truth, and a real investigator doesn't break the rules. A real investigator doesn't break the law. Yeah, but, but then again, with with the UFO community, uh, you know, if, if you want to put it like that, then, mm-hmm. then a real investigator really doesn't get that much done. Then they're not real investigators, are they? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. You could be right. I'm. I'm not really sure. It's, that's just. That's just my theory. You know, if you want to, mm-hmm. if if you want to get something done, sometimes you got to stick your neck out and sue to. Oh, to I get I, I agree good that or bad results, but get results. I I agree. You stick your neck out, but I totally disagree with breaking the law. If the sign says private property, stay off. You stay off. To yeah, prove but then a point again, I think there's a little city in Arkansas that says spitting on the sidewalk will get you uh, thrown in jail. So, yeah. you know, some of these laws are, or uh, I, I know why they're there. But, but a government know. installation is a government installation. You're not breaking a municipal law. You're breaking a federal law. <laughs> but it would be fun. Have you ever been arrested? No, never. So why, would, so why would you want to taint your... your your reputation just to oh. grandstand well, a UFO investigation? Quite frankly, uh, uh, f- quite, quite frankly, Bob, I really don't give a crap anymore. Why, Ken? You're, you're, a, you're, a, you're a very, you're a hardworking man, and to hear you say that you don't give a crap anymore, that, that worries me. Well, it's, it's you know, it's, I'm, I'm just, just tired of, of all these investigations and, and everything else basically just just going nowhere they they you know sometimes I wonder why I even do this am I doing any good uh, I, I really I really can't answer that question if I'm doing any good by doing what I do man Ken I'm sorry to hear that you sound so so despondent so negative about it because usually you're 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 so upbeat you know you're so by the book kind of guy yeah, well, that, a lot of things have happened with MUFON that, that uh, you know, like I said, I, I love the organization, and, and at least they're trying to do something. But uh, 
the politics in MUFON are, are, are staggering, and there's just a lot of things that MUFON has done in the past uh, that, that I just haven't agreed for. You no. know, like Roger Marsh. I don't know if you know Roger Marsh. No, I don't, no. Yeah, well, he was the uh, he was with them forever. Was a journalist and wrote a book, and and I Roger did everything, and just one day they let him go, and mm-hmm. and uh, you know he was pretty despondent about that. But uh, you know, if you get a chance, Google Roger Marsh, uh, Mar- Roger Marsh, uh, Mufon, and, yes, and uh, you know he was one of the he was one of the top kicks here at Mufon, and and I'm I'm they, they Mufon, like I said, I love them, but they they've just done a lot of things that, uh, quite frankly, I, I cannot agree with them. Ken, as time goes by so fast whenever I'm talking to you, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Always uh, good talking to you. And Ken, uh, let's talk again, because like I said, I'm worried about you talking the way you're talking. And um, have you thought, no, we'll get, we'll talk again, Ken. We'll talk again. But... Yeah, no, I appreciate it. You're, you're a good friend there, Rob. And, mm. and I, I, you know, it's an honor to be on the X-Zone, that's for sure. And I just appreciate you getting in touch with me. And, uh, yeah, we'll talk again, my friend. All right, Ken. Take care of yourself. Okay, buddy? Okay. Have a good weekend. Uh, holiday, sir. You too. Merry Christmas, Kenny. Okay, you too. Explanation. Ken Pfeiffer has been my guest for this hour. And we'll be posting all the websites on how you can get a hold of Ken on his... Um, bio that we're going to be posting. We'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news as the Exxon continues right here from our broadcast center and studios in Crystal Beach, Ontario, Canada. 